Welcome to the COVID Chronicles YYC. I'm Denise Summers of Enfora Communications, a local business storyteller and communications consultant. Today we're talking to Vivian Mayer, owner of Vivian Art Gallery in Inglewood. And so welcome Vivian, and thanks for joining Thank us. Yeah, and so um, you've just recently moved to Inglewood. Tell me about that. What, what was the reason behind that? Yes, it ended up being rather interesting timing. Um, I made the decision to move to Inglewood last summer. Uh, this building that I'm in um, is a brand new development by uh, Jim Hill, who is the same gentleman who developed the building across the street where the Esker Foundation is, um, which is a wonderful public art space for Calgary. Um, so Jim approached me three years ago when he started planning this building because he's very uh, dedicated to having a strong art presence in this neighborhood. And he's really wanted more of the uh, commercial art spaces to move down here. Um, so he approached me three years ago. It took me a while to come around because I had been in the Beltline since 2013 uh, and uh, was kind of settled into that space. Um, but I really came to feel like I would, uh, be uh, driven by the traffic and energy that I knew that this, uh, this neighborhood would bring into a space. And uh, while I loved my Beltline Gallery, uh, foot traffic was quite light. So I was really uh, dependent on people coming to my gallery as a destination. Uh, so um, I made the decision last summer and uh, the space began to be fixtured as a gallery in February. So as we all entered into this phase of social isolation, I was actually already full thrown, um, you know, into planning and executing this move. So um, I just went ahead with it <laughs> um, and, and uh, didn't, you know, I, I wasn't able to open the exhibition I had planned to be my last swan song in the belt line because it was meant to open a third week of March uh, and everything was beginning to close down. So uh, we entered into a uh, phase of virtual presence, which uh, I think a lot of businesses uh, responded by going virtual. An art gallery uh, requires people having a visual engagement at a minimum um, with, with the products. Uh, so we uh, did that entire show virtually um, and then we're able to open just two weeks ago in this new location physically for the first time since then right so was the timing kind of good then for you that um because you were setting up the gallery and and getting it ready to open you would have been closed at the beginning of of the covid pandemic anyway is that right? yeah um yeah i mean i guess it was um I mean, I hesitate to say it was good, although I feel like we made good things out of it. Right. You know, I, um, I, I don't sit well. I don't sit still very well. <laughs> so um, when everyone started to have to isolate and close down and all of that, I felt really bad for the artist. Yeah. Um, so immediately started planning to do, you know, we did a, a YouTube live and Instagram live opening event for her she and I physically distancing in the gallery and we spent an hour and talked about the work and, um, and saw a couple of online sales as a result of that. Okay. So um, it, was, uh, it was a quick response on my part to begin to do things virtually. And like a lot of businesses, I expect I always will now because okay. it really offered a lot. Um, while we lost the ability to connect with our community directly here in Calgary, it opened us up to a whole nother world. Okay. Yes. Being outside of Calgary? Is yes, that, yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, and, and here as well, because I, I noticed immediately when, um, when all of this pandemic started and people were isolated in their homes, there was such an appetite for social media. So even people who had been resistant to the idea of Instagram, we're suddenly engaging with it. Um, and our numbers, uh, we went up, well, a number, like a third 
in our number of followers over the course of March, April, May to now. Uh, and I think it was about uh, people wanting, you know, they were starved for content and they weren't able to go out to the galleries. They weren't able to socially connect with the artists the way they normally would. And so they responded to this online presence in a whole new way, I think. Um, and we, we just embraced that. So I, in addition to doing um, virtual promotions of the exhibition I had in space, I did two Instagram series over the course of those three months. Right, and, um, um, it meant that every single day I was planning uh, a major post, um, which uh, kept me active and engaged. Right. And, um, and I found there was just, yeah, this appetite for it. Yeah, it's interesting uh, how we've come to depend so much on the arts during this time. And I was just talking to a, another interviewee last week who works with um, not-for-profit organizations um, and a lot of the arts ones um, here in Calgary and, uh, and about how underfunded these organizations are quite mm -hmm. often. Yeah. Uh, but yet in this time, we've really come to depend on them. And uh, so it's, yeah, it's been very interesting. And so you um, represent a lot of uh, emerging and established Canadian artists, is that correct? That's yeah. right, Denise. Primarily, um, I have two artists on my roster who are not Canadian. One, one actually graduated high school here in Calgary. Um, she went to Western Canadian High and it's where she first picked up her, her skill of photography. Um, and she is Ethiopian and had left as a small child and returned as an adult. And so she is in Ethiopia. Um, so she is non-Canadian, but yet she was Canadian educated and raised largely. Um, and then I have another a South African artist, otherwise all Canadian and primarily um, emerging to mid-career. Uh, so um, that typically, I mean, it's kind of arbitrary in a way, but typically an artist is considered emerging until 10 years after their graduation from a post-secondary um, institution. Oh, really? So, oh, so we're talking about, uh, I, I really enjoy building careers. So it's a big, it's a big focus for me. Yeah. Well, that's great that they have you supporting them. And your, your um, first exhibition is with a Calgary artist, Eric Olson. Uh, is yes. That yeah, yeah. It, um, it is yeah. correct. I'm happy to, to do a wander around. Um, Eric is um, a Calgary guy, although he's been in Dusseldorf, Germany for just well over four years now. He went, um, he was invited to study under a, an international painter named Peter Doig. And uh, Peter was teaching at the Kunst Academy in Dusseldorf. Uh, Eric Olson um, was living and working in Calgary in a studio in the old Cannery Row building. Okay. And um, he uh, always loved Peter Doig and there was a retrospective in Montreal and he traveled to Montreal to see it and managed to meet Peter at the opening. Um, and, you know, as artists do, they went drinking afterwards. Um, and he uh, ended up getting an invitation to go study with Peter, which was uh, a phenomenal opportunity, but often we overlook opportunities like that because they just feel too big and too daunting. But Eric is a traveler. He's a wanderer. He loves adventure. So he took it on. He moved to Dusseldorf and studied for a full year at the Kunst Academy under Peter Doig. Um, that was 2014, 2015. Um, and he loved it so much there that he got an artist visa. He got a studio and he's still there. Oh, good he's, for him. Yeah. he's back and forth quite a bit because his parents are here and um and his friends you know many of his friends are here so he's typically been here at least once a year for a good long stretch and an exhibition and he planned to be here for this opening um but of course the world went sideways so instead of eric coming to help open this new space with me um he ended out in social isolation like everyone else physical isolation in his studio and apartment in Dusseldorf alone, um, not really in a position to travel at all, uh, let alone come home, and um, away from all of his friends. So uh, he turned to Walt Whitman, um, among other poets, but he really started uh, 
digesting Walt uh, with quite an appetite. And this entire exhibition is based on a Walt Whitman poem um, called mm -hmm. Among the Multitude. So Among the Multitude um, is a poem about walking into a crowded room, which of course we haven't been able to do during COVID-19, walking into a, a crowded room and locking eyes with a stranger across the room and knowing that that's your true love. So very romantic idea. Um, mm -hmm. So here Eric is in the springtime in Dusseldorf, working in isolation, um, reading this poetry and having this wonderful romantic notion that can't be actualized. So he created the crowd. So the exhibition is actually the, um, his friends, the people that he couldn't be around that he would have loved to have um, been with. Oh, how fascinating. Well, I can't um, come and see it. Uh, so, and he, they're all black and white. So for anyone who knows Eric Olson, they know that it's actually incredibly unusual for him. Um, yeah, it's not like his earlier work. Typically I, does things yeah. that are incredibly colorful. Yes, yes, and, and big. Um, big, colorful. I mean, he does small too, but he... Um, he, this is his first black and white show, and it quite um, purposely was black and white because for him, the springtime was devoid of color. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I'm really so looking this, forward to uh, coming to Coming in and seeing it, yeah. yeah. So there's um, his profile with okay. the poem written in his head. So he made this piece for me, God bless his soul. So it's commemorating the opening of the Inglewood space. Yeah. Vivian Art, June 2020, Inglewood, Eric Olson, Calgary, and he's got a little wild rose there. Um, okay. Oh, that's he great. Room, he didn't have room to write the word Alberta. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, so... Um, so this is the exhibition and it's all unframed um straight on the wall which uh, i think with this particular show works really well and what's nice about it is it means that these works because they're works on paper and they're unframed are incredibly affordable which um felt like the right thing to do right now right. it just felt like i'm opening in this neighborhood um with this beautiful show of works and the prices start at like nine hundred dollars and the most expensive piece is that large mayday tree that we just looked at at right. five thousand dollars and most of the works are twelve hundred and twenty five hundred so it's just for a piece of unique art by an artist of eric olson's caliber right. that's incredibly accessible yes. so um so the work is black and white the work is sort of uh apt for the, the moment and it's really um, approachable from a price point perspective so it just all of those things coming together it just feels like the perfect show for right now yeah very accessible for uh, mm -hmm. everyone mm -hmm. that price yeah absolutely yes and um and i know um i was in looking at your your website and so on i saw something about something called collecting a, a new app that uh, is also working to make art more accessible for people. Yes. Um, and to allow them to um, um, see and interact with art um, on a daily basis. Can you tell me about that? Absolutely. Um, it's actually quite a fun app. It, um, it was launched by an organization, Canadian organization of galleries called the um, Art Galleries Association of Canada. Um, and it's actually out of Montreal. Uh, but a national organization, and they run an art fair every spring in Montreal called Papier, which is quite popular, and I've done it for the last five years. Um, in the absence of being able to offer Papier this year because of COVID, the organization um, embarked on developing this app. So um, if, if, if someone's looking for it, uh, they just need to go into the app store on their phone and um, and if they search AGAC or even just collecting, it'll come up. Um, so this is what 
okay. that looks like. Um, so the first thing you'll see is a whole bunch of uh, galleries. They're all the member galleries of the Art Gallery Association of Canada. So from Calgary, there is Vivian Art and Trepani there um, on, this, on this list. There's also galleries from Vancouver, from Regina, from Toronto, from Ottawa, and of course from Quebec as well. Um, there's quite a number. So it's a lot of fun um, because it allows you to find a gallery, sort of look at artworks that you like, but then you can actually position them on your wall. Um, and take a picture of what it would look like on your wall, and it's all to scale, so it's kind of fun, right? It's so it's quiet, right? Um, so if, and it's free. So if someone um, is curious, they can look for the AGAC collecting app and download it on their phone for free, and then just play. Um, so it's it's meant to allow collectors to position potential purchases on a wall. And then there's actually all of the price information is there as well. So one of the things I really like about it, and what I also really like about how people are responding to things nowadays in the art world, is it's so transparent. Um, you know, there's always been this little song and dance in the art world around the elitism of it, of hiding prices and people having to ask how much something is um, and maybe it's maybe it's not always the same price depending who asks. Like just all of that kind of stuff um, is going the way of the dinosaur a bit right now. And I, I really think it's a positive element to um, what's transpired with everything moving digital. And do you think that was um, intimidating for people to, uh, or for some people to have to ask or? or Absolutely. Absolutely, Denise. And, you know, I do a lot of art fairs, um, usually like three or four a year. And of course, that's changed right now. But typically, I, I just did New York at the beginning of March, came home and went straight <laughs> into quarantine. Um, oh, yeah. I, you know, I, I usually am in, in Miami and Seattle, Montreal, Toronto, New York, doing these art fairs. And I always put um, the prices up right beside the work, all the information and, and the price. And I can't tell you how many people come in and they're so refreshed by that. And they're like, thank you. Like, I, it's just really nice to just know what I'm looking at and what it costs and not feel uncomfortable about having to ask. Right. Um, so I'm a big fan of transparency. It just, it's just removal of barriers. And I mean, if you think about how people purchase, people's purchasing um, routines have changed dramatically. And there's way more people buying online than ever before. And um, the idea that you have to step into a gallery and then you have to actually ask how much something costs, um, it's just, it doesn't fly anymore. Right, right. So my prices are always posted. My prices are out. Um, um, I'm on Artsy, which is an international platform for people to buy art. And some of my artists have actually asked me not to have prices there and I have to sort of battle with them a little bit um, because it is just such a traditional way to do business in the art world. Right, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, and with COVID happening right now, how does that impact people coming into the gallery? Uh, are you limited to how many people you can have in at a time? Yes, for sure, for sure. I mean, I certainly... I opened my doors two weeks ago, Saturday, but I didn't do an opening event. I did a virtual live Instagram event um, for this opening, just like I did for the one in March with Sarah Nordine. So Eric Olson, I mean, he was in Dusseldorf anyway, so it worked out well. Um, we had a split screen, he and I, and we um, chatted for an hour and, and walked around and looked at the work kind of like you and I just did. Um, the Saturday was our first day opened and I really didn't know what to expect because, um, you know, I think a lot of people are tentative about being out and about, but we had 38 people that first day and Oops. of course not all at once. Um, so it was nice. I mean, of all things to feel safe. I mean, I had the front door propped open. In fact, any day I've been open since I opened, it's propped open. So no one even has to deal with the doorknob. Right. handle. Right. Um, I have 
hand sanitizer and masks at the door. Um, but then it's an art gallery. There's nothing to touch. <laughs> like you literally can walk in and look around the entire space and never make contact with anything. Right. Um, uh, so I think people have felt quite safe. I've been wearing my mask um, as a form of respect. Yeah. And then, you know, when some of my regulars come in with their permission, I'll remove it. Um, yeah. But it's been quite easy to distance. Um, you know, the guide, the, yeah, the guidelines are um, one person for every 10 square feet. I've got 1,700 square feet here. There's no way I've had 17 people. I've had eight to 10 at most right. at one time. Um, so I, I think it's felt like a fairly safe space for people. Right. Yeah, no, it sounds like it was, uh, like it is. Yeah, very, very, yeah. yeah. And, and I, I, don't, I don't know how much of it is the change in neighborhood. But I've had way more traffic, more people coming into the space than I'm used to. So it's been a very pleasant couple of weeks. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I've been, yeah. I was, I've been to your um, previous gallery um, before. Mm -hmm. and In yes, outline, yeah. Yeah, and I can definitely see where you would get um, a lot more traffic in, um, in Inglewood. And yes. just, yeah, just the way that communities um, set up and, and designed and, and so on. So that's, that's great. And so what, um, what would you like to see for the gallery going forward? What, what hopes do you have? Um, well, I feel like um, be, there's no way any of us could have seen this coming. But what I did see coming and was already responded, responding to was the real change in the economy in, in Calgary. Mm -hmm. So um, having um, uh, an online platform for sales that's international, artsy, um, is something I've been doing for already uh, a year and a half, almost two years. Um, that I, was something I established well in advance of this. And also going to art fairs is something I started to do um, four years ago. Like I, I always went to one or two, but I just upped it um, because I really felt that well, Calgary is amazing. We have incredible supporters here. And to be honest, this store, this show has sold so well. And only uh, two of the sales were from outside of Calgary. So we're, we're um, very well supported here in our community. And I, I, I don't want to say I don't want to appreciate that because I really do. But I've known for a while that it was important that the galleries market be much broader than just the city. Um, so I've always been focused on um, not being a regional gallery. I represent artists from across the country. I've got artists in Saskatchewan, Quebec, Ontario, um, British Columbia, and that's uh, been a real focus for me. With that comes purchasers from across those provinces right. as well. And then having a presence at the art fairs broadens our, our sort of group of purchasers and collectors. And so I feel like we're, um, in a better position than we would have been um, with this all hitting us uh, because we have a broader uh, base of collectors than we would if we were really regional in our focus. Um, I hope to get back to the art fair circuit. It fuels me. Um, I get a lot of energy from it as well. And it is partly how I have um, managed to find such strong talent um, to represent is that I get to all of these other cities. Um, and meet these artists uh, from other parts of the country. So I hope that's in my future. I'm optimistic it will be as things begin to settle with, with all of this pandemic. Um, I'm going to continue on the track I'm on, which is representing artists that are approachable, price point wise, um, because I'm also uh, really enjoying building new collectors. And building new collectors means being approachable price point wise. So uh, the two things work hand in hand, supporting emerging artists and building a new collector base of younger collectors works really well together. Right. Um, and I like the idea of actually having the two introduced, mirroring the two. They're like, they're real people. The, pe the artists are real people. And the collectors actually have the opportunities typically because I usually have artists come when I open a show 
to meet and actually develop a relationship and begin to support a career, which I think is a really right. exciting part of collecting art. So that will continue to be my focus moving forward for sure. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. And uh, yeah, and just a, a wonderful approach to it. Uh, so that, that brings us to the end of the interview here, Vivian. Is there anything you, else you'd like to add? Um, thank you for your interest and support. I, um, I guess I would just like to add that I really applaud all of the people out there who are um, resilient and strong and fighting and finding new and creative ways to do business, no matter what they're doing, whether they're in a restaurant business or an art gallery or a clothing store. It's just so challenging for, for all of us. Um, and I think, uh, I just really applaud ingenuity and I, I see it all around us right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, well, thank you so much for joining us. It was a, a really interesting chat. And, uh, and thank you to everyone who's watched the COVID Chronicles. And stay safe and stay healthy and Calgary strong. Thank you, Denise. Thank you, Vivian.